This is Andy Porowal for Boxing News. I'm joined by trainer, trainer Manny Robles here in Liverpool. Manny, firstly, how are you? How's the flight over from the States? Uh, doing well, doing well. It took me a couple of days to get here, but I'm finally here and excited for the, uh, for the fight Saturday night, for sure. Obviously, I saw you very briefly out in Canada this past weekend. We saw your man Sal Sanchez fall ever so short in a terrific bout with Jason Maloney. Just to start off there before we move on to this card, how's Sal all doing first? Oh, great, you know. Saul fought a great fight versus Jason Maloney. I'm very proud of him. Uh, he gave his best efforts up in, in that ring. He's recovering from the, from the fight now, and hopefully we can get a rematch. I was going to say, obviously, after the fight, he spoke openly about wanting to rematch, wanting to kind of go down that route, whether it be through the board and what have you. Do you think it's likely a rematch could take place? I will, I will, I will love that, but it's up to the promoter, uh, Top Rank and uh, uh, Maloney, the Maloney team, and hopefully they'll go ahead and, and consider, you know, giving us a rematch. I, I believe uh, Saul Sanchez deserves it, definitely. For many people, it was a close fight. Did you feel like it was close or did you feel like Saul had done more than enough and it was comfortable in his favour? How did you see it? Uh, I felt like we won, honestly, seven, uh, seven, seven out, of, out of the 12 rounds for sure. And, uh, you know, at least a draw would have been nice. Unfortunately, the judges thought otherwise. And uh, what are you going to do? You know, when you have to fight the fighter plus the judges, I mean, it's just, you got to place the judges. But it is what it is. I mean, I don't... You know, it's not Maloney's fault, of course. He he did he did what he was supposed to do, just like Saul Sanchez, and I, and I think they both deserve a great amount of respect. It was a fantastic fight and a potential early year of a uh, early fight of the year contender at that, um, Manny. But moving forward, moving on to the reason we're here in Liverpool. Obviously, you're you're part of Team Michaela Mayer. She faces Natasha Jonas this coming weekend. How do you feel she's looking at 147? Oh, she's looking great, as you can see. You know, she's fitting in the, the way quite well, and uh, I believe this is also going to be a barn burner. It's going to be a great fight, and uh, I, it's got the makings to be another, uh, uh, you know, possibly another fight of the year contender for sure. With that in mind, obviously speaking with Natasha Jonas, she said that one thing she's learned in her big fights where she's fallen short in previously against Katie Taylor and against Terry Harper is she needs to start quicker. With that in mind going into the Michaela Mayo fight, how do you expect either girl to start? Do you expect it to be a quick, explosive start from Mayo? We shall see. I mean, you know, uh, as you know, Michaela's not the fastest starter herself, so... Uh, the, it's 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 all about it's all about styles, you know what I mean. And I think they both have the perfect style. To they complement each other, and I believe it's a, it's going to be a great fight. I have to ask as well, Manny. She's the away fighter, your girl. Concerns if he was to go to the scorecards? Uh, I, you know, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it, it's not the first time we find ourselves being on a B side, and and uh, she's you know, Michaela's just going to have to go out there and and fight, you know. Fight or fight, and, and and you know take it one one extra step, one extra level to make sure that the same thing that happened last week with the Saul Sanchez doesn't happen again with Michaela. Moving away from her, moving up to the heavyweight division, we had a brief chat there about Charles Martin. Is there anything you know about what's going on with Charles? I don't know, man, but it, it's quite interesting what's going on with the heavyweight division right now. And uh, uh, you know, Charles, I stay in touch with him from time to time. I have to I have to get on the phone, speak to the management, and see what's going on. But. Uh, uh, you know, he's got to get himself in the gym. I'm, I'm sure he is. You know, he takes good care of himself, but uh, he's got to get in the mix because there's a lot going on right now, especially in Saudi Arabia with all the, you know, the what we just saw a month ago or so with the uh, all the heavyweights fighting out there and uh, what's coming up next with uh, Usyk and Fury and Joshua and it's just and, and Danu and it's just interesting, man. So it's it's a it's a great time for boxing, great time for the heavyweight division for sure. There are some fights I want to put to you there, and just before we do come on to that, a man you used to train, Andy Ruiz uh, Jr., seems to be a little bit out of the picture at the minute. Um, not a lot of talk about what's going on with him. Is it disappointing for you to see that kind of fall from grace, that high of New York, becoming unified champion together, and obviously the lows of the rematch out in Saudi Arabia and where his career seemingly kind of fallen off since? Uh, it, it should be disappointing for him, not for me. I mean, I, you know, we're, still, we're still here, we're still working, we're still doing what we love to do, but definitely it's, it's you know, out of sight, out of mind, like they say, right? So, I mean, what are you going to do? He's got to get himself back on a horse and, and uh, you know, show up. Show up. I mean, what, what else can you do? I mean, I, I really don't know much about Andy or what's going on. That's a question you should, you know, you should ask him and his team. But, you know, in order for you to ask that question, you know, he's got to he's got to come around. So 
I'm sure he should be itching um, to get him a ring on the back of all this heavyweight talk. Let's say if he was to make a return, what if he's at his absolute best, the, the version we saw against Anthony Joshua, for example, that won the first fight, where would you rank him in amongst the current heavyweight division? At the very top. I mean, you know, what happened that night when we defeated uh, Anthony Joshua that first time was no accident. He was, and if you look at his record, if you look at his resume and look at all the fighters, all the, you know, tough, good, tough fighters he's fought, he's got a hell of a resume. And, and, you know, all he needs is that one fight to get back in, in, in the spotlight and, and, you know, maybe, you know, f get an opportunity to fight for the heavyweight championship for sure. I know for a while there's all that talk of a Deontay Wilder fight potentially taking place. Obviously, Deontay losing to Joseph Parker just before Christmas. Would that still be of interest to you to see Andy versus Deontay Wilder or not so much now? No, definitely. I, I believe that, you know, if, if, don't forget that uh, Parker also fought uh, Andy Reese in, uh, in his backyard. And... Um, you know that was a good fight, and I believe Andy gave uh, Parker a better fight than he than than uh, than um, Wilder did. So, like like I said, you know, Andy Andy's a great fighter. He's a very good fighter. Uh, I believe it would be a great fight versus Deontay Wilder. It would be a great fight even now with the defeat to get Wilder, you know, to fight uh, Andy perhaps. I mean, look, it, it, a loss does not define does not define you as a fighter. You know what I mean? So it's 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 just a. a, a it's just a situation where Wilder, get him back in the ring, get, get him a win or two, and then match him up against, you know, Anthony Joshua or, or even Andy Reese, if you like, or Fury. I mean, it's just everybody fighting everybody, man, despite of the, the uh, uh, I think, I believe they all have the makings to be great fights. Win, lose, or draw, they, they, it, it, again, it doesn't define you. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a great time to be in a heavyweight division for sure. It certainly is, and sticking with the theme of the heavyweight division, Fury Usyk, you briefly mentioned it earlier on, undisputed supremacy on the line. Who comes out on top in February 17th, man? Oh, man, it's going to be a great fight. But uh, you know what, like they say, you know, you're only as good as your last fight. So I, be I believe uh, Usyk has the edge at the moment, you know. He's, and we all saw Fury's last fight. You know, he, he didn't come in the best of shape. He underestimated his opponent, you know. I think we all did, you know, I think we all thought that uh, uh, Fury's going to have a walk in the park and, and that wasn't the case, so, you know, now he's just going to get his act together, get back in the gym and come in the best shape possible because Usyk is no joke. And another one you mentioned, Anthony Joshua, Francis Ngannou. That surprise factor has left Francis Ngannou now on the back of a Tyson Fury fight. Yeah. I'm sure AJ has that footage now to study and he will be doing so. What do you expect to see though from Anthony Joshua, his second fight with Ben Davison as well? box stick and move i don't expect anything less from uh joshua especially in the first few rounds and first six rounds he's gonna have to go out there and uh fight at the end of his jab and you know mid-range long range and uh, stick and move use his footwork and then eventually you know perhaps try to wear his uh, his opponent down you know he's he's going up against a big solid you know heavyweight and and he proved that he could box too so he, he proved that he could be against so you know the, the best fighters in the heavyweight division for sure I and mean, of course, on that undercard, you mentioned Joseph Parker earlier. He faces Jean, uh, Zhang Zhilai, who's had a terrific year last year. Two big victories over Joe Joyce. Just your thoughts on Parker Zhang? That's a good, it's going to be a great fight. You know, Parker's got a great deal of experience. The great thing about Parker is that he's been staying busy. And he's been staying active. And that's the best thing you can do as a, as a fighter, as a boxer, is to stay busy. And then just final one to end on next weekend, back out in Arizona, Jaime Mungia and John Ryder. Manny, just your thoughts, please. Oh, man, it's going to be a good fight. You know, John Ryder gave uh, Canelo a very, very good fight. I was there in Guadalajara, Mexico, and uh, uh, Mungia should not underestimate Ryder. It's, it's, it's going to be a, 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 good, uh, a good fight, a crowd-pleasing fight. Arizona, you know, and... Uh, all the Mexican fans, I'm sure, are going to show up and support Munguia. But uh, it should be after fighting uh, Canelo in uh, in Mexico. You know what I mean? It's just, it uh, nice exactly. So you know, it should be a good fight for sure. Manny, it's good to see you as always. Obviously, good luck tomorrow night. Good luck uh, with the coming fights for yourself. And obviously, safe travels back home. Thank you for speaking to me in Boxing News. You got it. I appreciate you having me. Thank you.